to our live 133rd <laughs> episode of the Rook and Dave Show, and this is a very, very, very special episode because we are here to promote the Austin chapter of the American Lung Association's Bike for Air Climb 2015. Yes, all right, so, yeah. Can I say hello? Oh, yeah, say hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, so you're here. How was, how was your week? Good, good. Oh, I went dancing last night. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> yeah, we went and saw Johnny Gowdy and the band he plays with Skyrocket. And they used to be called K-Tel Hit Machine. And uh, let's pause that. That's not a clue anymore. All right. And so they cover every song ever made in the history of music, just about. I didn't hear any... 70s, 80s, I think. And 90s, because okay. they played Cheryl Crow. Okay. I didn't hear any ragtime music, so I don't know if they played The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. Wow, that's an old reference. I know it's over 100 years old. No, not quite. They did Abba, they did a Cindy Lauper, they did Prince. It young was MC? Awesome. They had Young MC just bust the move? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was fun. It was fun. They, and they have a rotating... The band members take turns singing whatever song so that, you know, if a dude needs to sing in, like, Prince-style falsetto, you can do that. If someone needs to do a Roy Orbison, then they switch out. And they did a lot of pretty woman stuff and stuff. And then they mix it. They mix and they mix their uh, they mix their song. So in the middle of a song, like during the the bridge or whatever of a song, they'll go into like two or three different other songs, and then they turn around and go back and finish the song. Right. right yeah. And for ten bucks, it wasn't bad. Like ten dollars a person. It's down at the one to one bar, and it seems like they tend to bounce between here and Houston. And uh, so if you're not at one-to-one -one bar here in Austin, you're at Steiner Steakhouse, because I guess people in Steiner are just like good cover bands or something. Like that. So it was cool, though. Yeah, so we're here, we're here to promote our Fight for Air Climb team. Currently, we're in second place because some dude just keeps throwing cash at it. Now, it's all for a good cause. Well, he is a football player, right? Yeah, Colt, 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 Colt Fiction. I, I, Look, man, look, he's, he's doing a good thing, we're doing a good thing. He's, yeah, he's, got, he's a got a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. I would hate to be bitch slapped with that Super Bowl ring. <laughs> so keep up the good work. <laughs> that would hurt, that'd be painful. Right. This last episode we did, episode 132, got a little heavy. Right. And because of that topic, I didn't want to sway from that whole thing. Which is why I didn't talk about Moon Tower. Oh, okay. But I did go to Moon Tower this year. And ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't gone to Moon Tower, go to Moon Tower. It's a great event. It's, look, okay, I'm a comic nerd, geek, whatever. It, but I love this. I love this event because they bring in top touring comedians from across the nation. They bring in other acts from across the country. And they have, they, they, they proudly feature local comedians. And... I have a list of some folks that I want to talk about. That's right. I did my homework and I have show notes. Yes, show notes. Oh, wait, one more thing. Wait, before I get going. They're going to print it out. Fancy. I printed it out. Um, we're doing a silent auction to help raise money. I've donated two sets of comic books, and Lisa from Lisa Jimenez, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Gabe is married to a woman. <laughs> And she, and she has, and she not only puts up with him, but she's a very talented hairstylist. She hooked me up yesterday, and she's donated a hundred dollar gift certificate and what else? So a total of a hundred twenty five dollar gift certificate to her salon. So please go back there and bid. It's a silent option. So write down. We do have starting bids, so start there and then increment your like a dollar. So increase whatever. Whole dollars, please. No fifty cent bids. All right, y'all. Where are we for the Periscope viewers? Oh, oh we're, that's right, we're live from Mr. Trump's. Yeah, Austin, Texas. Where's that at? In Austin, yo. 
Like where? Like if they wanted to get in their car and come down, like where, where should they head? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So we're at, um, we're just off of 183 Nolan Road in front of the Target Shopping Center. I don't know the cross street. So there we go. So uh, 183, is it research at this point or is it still Anderson? Yes. I don't know. Austin, <laughs> pick a name. Six in one hand, half a dozen. Yeah. But it's a great, I love this venue. Uh, Alfredo, the owner, is very accommodating to us. This is our third live podcast from Mr. Tramps, and uh, they love soccer here. Apparently. They just said hello from Abu Dhabi. Woo! What's up, Vinny Crystal? I hope your house is okay from that Fast Furious 7 car chase where they destroyed the entire city and whatever. Okay, so we've been around for, oh wait, comedy, sidetrack. Even I have notes, I get sidetracked. Check it out. So these are, these are some comedians that I found very insanely entertaining during the show, I mean during the festival. Uh, first one, we all know him, Matt Bearden. He started to do, he started to do more stand up, and he started to do more stand up, and so he's he's growing, he's building the set back up, and he's, he did several sets. He hosted for a couple of shows. He did a great job. Super funny dude. Of course, you know him from Billy and Bob. Uh, Judah Friedlander. Now I've never heard Judah Friedlander do stand up. Now he was all he was um, a regular on uh, Thirty Rock. And he's always wearing the gimme caps, right? Uh, but his stand-up is amazing, man. He's a funny dude. He's a legit funny guy. He does good crowd work. I really like that dude. Uh, old school comedian Emo Phillips. I've never seen him live. I didn't even know about him until this until this thing, uh, until Moon Tower. And he's got a great set. He has a unique voice. Like, physically, he has a unique voice. But the stuff he touches on, he's, he's very... Um, socially conscious, politically conscious, and his, his comedy reflects that. So if you ever get a chance to see him or download Emo Phillips or find him on the internet, do it. Give him a listen. He's, he's worth it. And um, the guy that surprised me the most and I kept accidentally seeing was a guy named David O'Dotry. He's an Irish comedian and he finally got a visa to work in the United States, so hopefully we'll be seeing him more often as well. He's a great dude. He goes up with a Casio, like a Sony, like a cheap Sony or Casio keyboard. And I saw him do Brendan Walsh's podcast, and I also saw him do, um, crap, what's his name? You made it weird. Um, Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes. He did, thank you. Thank you, audience. Pete Holmes is the podcast. And he, each time, and I saw him do a live set too. And he, each time he brings up this Casio keyboard, he talks about how his dad was a jazz player. Uh -huh. And he talks about this. He goes, yeah, but. This isn't what jazz sounds like. He hits the jazz beat on the keyboards, like, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know that, that? Like when Ross on Friends was going to stay home for the summer and practice his music, he was just playing Axel Foley on his keyboard. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That. that is why. One more thing on the comedy thing, though. Uh, our good friend Adam Wolf is participating tonight at Cat City Comedy Club for the funniest person in Austin. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, Adam, you got mixed reactions, dude, but listen, it'll be okay. We'll be Wait, Adam okay. Oh, no, we'll live, man. I'm going to go out. I don't know if you'll fill up, too. You think, you think, will noodles let you go out? You got to rest up. But you think noodles will let you go out there and hang out for a little bit? Party okay. girl, now. We got to get this kid ready for comedy, right? Put some, I don't know, play some tick guitar and put some headphones on her or something. Some, uh, John Toll. <laughs> play, play the bass of John Toll comedy. No? <laughs> Racist Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Racist Eddie. <laughs> Eddie Murphy Ross. Red Fox. Let's do it. Let's do it right. So seriously, if you guys want to, you've got time, go out tonight. The show starts at 8 o'clock. There's like a $5 cover, I think, for uh, the prelims, which is what this still is. We're in week, this uh, kicks off week four, I believe, of, of the contest. Maybe something like No, week five. Four. Math. Fact check, though. It's the last week. Yeah. This is the last week. So this should be week four of the, of the prelims. So go support Adam Wolf. He's a funny dude, actually. He, he actually has good stage presence. I don't really care. Well, what I mean is... Whatever, dude. I'm a little anxious up here. Okay. <sighs> Talk for a minute. Talk for a minute. I'm a little... What? Okay, so you were going to say, what were you going to talk about next that you interrupted yourself? I keep interrupting myself. No, I'm right. talking on ice. That's great. Hang on. Okay. Keep talking. He even does that to me. <laughs> okay, so, are you ready? Let's go. That's for talking? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs>
We've been around for 133 episodes now. That's a long time in podcast years. Yes. Some last two, three episodes in clips. Okay. We had a we had a segment, and it was kind of a benchmark segment. We do it like the third podcast of the month, and people loved it. They always wrote in to ask Ruka. Ask Ruka. <laughs> So I decided, oh, case, I, I decided for this very special event that we would ask Ruka. Oh, yeah. And fortunately we had some questions from some concerned people with honest to God problems. People who need answers. They need advice. Um, and so four people, I, I picked of the of the hundreds and thousands of, of submissions, I picked four. Okay. Alright? So the first one. Dear Ruka, how can I convince my chick to do it in the butt? <sighs> Signed, anal dreaming and demon. These are not real. Hey, I don't, have, I don't write the questions. I just read them. That's your question. Uh-huh. That's Gage's question. Okay. Uh, How do I ask you? I need to ask him Shut a question because that's not happening. That's what I'm saying. Alcohol. How, how, did you, how would you, what would be something that would convince you to let it happen? Oh, it would not. So it's not happening, nothing. You can't make noodles in the book. <laughs> That's true, you cannot make noodles in the book. Well, I, why would you Should even give take up? that question? This yeah, is give up. To this guy. I mean, some people are really... Well, then he needs to go find somebody just like him. That's willing to take it. Like another dude or, uh, well, I mean, or a chick that's in it? Power bottom. I, I don't know. That's just weird. That's just weird? Yes. Okay, okay. Well, you know we got to stretch this out for another 40 minutes, right? I know. Don't ask questions like that. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Is that me? I don't know. All right. This is going great. Okay. <laughs> Dear Ruka, hi. My name is Jim, and I am in the seventh grade. Why are you listening, Jimmy? Thank you, but don't tell your parents. I really like this girl at school named Chloe. She's smart and laughs at my jokes. I don't know how to tell her because I think she'd laugh at me in the wrong way. How do I talk to her? Signed, Jimmy McPherson. He's in seventh grade, So he's in seventh grade? Yeah, Jimmy McPherson's in seventh grade. He likes his chick named Chloe. She's smart, she's funny. So just talk to her. Yeah, but he's scared. He could be weird looking, I don't know. (laughs) Girls are taller than boys in seventh grade. I, I don't know. How do I tell a seventh grade boy what to do? If you were okay, let's let's take Ruka back to seventh grade. Right. No, I don't understand. How how would you want a boy to talk to you? Well, just ask me a question. Hey, what do you like Wait, to do for fun? Why don't you just pretend it's Tommy asking you a question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I do try to talk to Tommy about that. Just talk to him about anything. Because the ask boys. Him your favorite. Color, your favorite song, your favorite food. Just ask oh, a yeah. question, but you have to talk. So the thing is, though, like, he's, I think maybe, like, he can't really define it, but I think he's trying to avoid friend zone. Because once a dude's in a friend zone, you're not coming out of friend zone. Well, then ask her out. Do you want to go see a movie? There what? Can my parents drive us to the theater to watch Transformers? Yes. Oh, yes. What? Yes. Just straight up ask her? Right. With the clear intention. Everyone to go see a movie. What or, do you mean? What intention? They're in seventh grade. Well, I'm just saying, man. They gotta learn early. They're not going to feel you. They, we got a we got a quick question here from Aaron. Yes. I, I have an ask Ruka question. Yes. I heard a rumor, and this might only be a rumor, but I heard that Doodle's actual father was Adam Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> no. Does Adam, does Adam yeah. his wife yeah. No. Okay. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Cool. Alright, then. Uh, we got another Ask Ruka question. Um, dear Ruka, I'm a 35-year-old grown man, but my mom won't let me buy a gun. I believe in the Second Amendment and feel it's my right to own a firearm. However, that bitch doesn't want any guns in her house. Should I buy one and keep it on the down low? If so, where should I hide it? She's always in my room cleaning and putting up clothes. Oh my it's so annoying. Are you kidding me, 35-year-old man living with your mother? How about get yourself your own place and then you don't have to hide anything? 
Stop. So what do you think about him wanting to own a gun? Do you think it, his mom has the right to like tell him? If he's living in her house, she does. Oh, her house her rules. Right. But he's a grown ass man, man. Oh well, then. No, he's not. No, no, no he's not. <laughs> Is that future Tommy? <laughs> uh, future, future T Bone. I don't know, but current T Bone has an arsenal of airsoft guns and knives in the house. Oh, stop! He's so on the drive home today. Uh -huh. um, he was telling me that oh, we have a lot of work to do. He's like, Mom, you're gonna have to work on that temper because that baby's gonna be scared. <laughs> By driving, of course. You know, I'm always, you know, did you say what he did wrong? And so then he's like, oh, and Dave's really got to work on those bad words. Oh. 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 <laughs> what the fuck, man? Hang on. So I think oh, new okay. segment. What the fuck is your in, problem? In that case, <laughs> In that case, then no more, no more stand-up comedy for T. Bone. That would be a bad influence on the oh, oh, oh. What you got, Laura? Laura of uh, Lala, one half of Radio Tataz. Wow, that was and an one half of non-committal. Non-committal. Non <laughs> I have a question for Ruth. Oh, Get up yes. on the mic. Don't be scared of it. Get up there, girl. <laughs> Don't want that. <laughs> both of our both of our podcasts have been afflicted recently by some slurry words. All right, she's off camera. <laughs> what do you intend to do? What should we do to stop this? I, it's annoying. That's for sure. So, to talk like a human, right? Educated human. Yes. Okay, so if you guys want to do that on your off time, like listen to these horrible podcasts, you know, that's fine. But we have educated um, co-hosts, so please. Why are you You're so serious? Our show. <laughs> I listen to ten-minute podcasts, and I still manage to talk like an adult. Right. Wow, somebody's a bit killer, Jones. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I say we start just killing mice. Oh. Uh, the I don't way we're set up, my mic kills her mic. Well, oh. I had kind of decided I bought a new weapon when I was on vacation. What is that thing? That thing looks ridiculous. It's a skinny and getting knife. But you hold it in your fist through your knuckles? Yes, knuckles? it's pretty awesome. I have it with me. Um, <laughs> and so instead of just turning awesome mic, I mean, I'm going to cut the <gasps> The next time I get all slurry. And all that. Yeah, this is the state where we're about to have open carry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how about we talk about it before we start our podcast and we're not going to use that time? We can limit. How about we limit the way they limit it? Brennan, on the soundboard, you get three. I, you get three references. I limited me on the soundboard. Oh, see? He was responsible. Bart! I'm so sorry you said this. So, obviously, 10-minute podcast has kind of oh, God damn it. put its claws into Texas podcasting, Austin podcasting, and it's just kind of like a, like that ear thing that went into Chekhov's head and, and Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan. Nerd! You know, so, no one's getting my references. No. All right, whatever, whatever. So, we'll try to limit that, I guess. Val? Val, you got anything to say? I'm formulating my response. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> we got one like more a asking nerd. the question. Okay. Back to it, back to it. <laughs> Dear Ruka, I was put up for adoption as an infant. My parents have always been open with me about this. Recently, I've come to discover where my birth mother was. 
I want to see her, but I don't know how, if I should or how I should proceed. Wait, I've seen this porn. Would she want to see me? <laughs> what do I do? Distraught in Dallas. Well, I mean, if you want, it, it's your choice, right? And if she really wants to meet, is it a he or she? I'm sorry, I missed that part. It doesn't okay. say. So, I mean, I think we all have, we all want to know. So, I think they just need to um, find out. I mean, contact her. That's the only way you're going to know. Yeah. Say, hey, this is who I am. I'd like to meet you. And then it's up to the parent to respond. But, I mean, you have to make um, that effort. That's true, yeah. They find it uh, the only thing that would probably tear you up worse to start Dallas is if you never try. Right. So as long as you go out there and you try, then you make that effort. And whether your birth mother says yes or no, at least you made that effort and you can sleep at night. Mm -hmm. But going around the rest of your years not knowing and wondering what if, what if, what if, when you were the one who could have made the first step, that is where the regret will come in. Don't regret her rejecting you if she does. Just, you know, the only regret is not trying. So I would say just go out there and make contact and see what happens. Sometimes it, it, it may not work out the way you planned or it may not end up being what you thought. Sometimes it will, but you never know until you try. So you got to try that. Yeah. All right, well, we brought back Ask Ruka. You answered questions about butt sex. It wasn't too hard. You answered questions about a dude living in the house with his mom who wants to die. Yeah, no. That was the answer. No. Come up, come up to the, what's the question? Come up to the mic. I said, what was my response to the... <laughs> no. Just no. No. Just no? Just say no to us. <laughs> just say no. What's up, 2015? <laughs> <laughs> His eyebrows just went so up. So this fight for air climb thing is something I've been doing for... It'll be my third year doing this. Uh, the first year I did it as an article piece for uh, the Austin Knot. Last year we had a super small team of just uh, Ruka here, myself, and Val. And it's been a fun event. It's, I don't know why I've attached, gotten attached to it. Maybe it's just the challenge of climbing 30 flights of stairs without puking. But that's what happens though. It, that experience of climbing those stairs really... It, 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 it'll leave even the most casual stair climber gasping for air at the end of the climb. My first year, I made a, mis a mistake. Sorry. I made a, mis I made a mistake. And I started off super fast. And so I sprinted up 11 flights of stairs. On the 11th flight, they offered me a cup of water. I'm like, yeah, I'll take a cup of water. And I stopped. In that second that I stopped, my legs were like, whoa, 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 what the fuck are you doing? And my lungs were like, hey, 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 no, no, no. Drank my water, and I couldn't sprint no more. I still had, like, math to do, because there's, like, more stairs to climb. I made it up the stairs, gasping. I made it up in, like, five and a half minutes, and I was kind of proud of myself. And then I spent the rest, the next hour, trying not to vomit. It, it was so taxing because I obviously didn't train. It was so taxing of an experience that my, and I've never felt like that. And even when I was in the military, we'd do two mile runs for PT tests. And we would pace ourselves, and then we would just dead sprint the last quarter mile or half mile or what have you, and just pull, full stride, full blown, and just knock it out. Well, I did the opposite. And anyone who knows anything about running, when you, when you go full sprint on a long run at the beginning, you have nothing left at the end. I made that mistake. Last year, I paced myself a little bit more moderately. And no training still. I'm still no training. I haven't trained yet this year. What are you talking about? This is training, right? <laughs> right. So, the first year, I, I, I'm running around. I'm trying to see the vendors and what have you, and I'm doing everything in my head to not throw up. I mean, I'm keeping everything in my stomach. I make it down to the parking garage, blah, that's when it happened, you know what I mean? And you went, you, you did it last year. Right. What was your, what was your experience like? Oh, it was hard. Um, of course, I did a little training, not too much. I never went out and tried more than 10 flights. I would do like three back and forth going down, and it was okay. It was still hard. So when I did it, I mean, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's, um, it is hard, but um, 
after the fourth flight, I was dying. <laughs> but you just keep going, and they have those little inspirational um, flyers, you know, kind of telling you about kids that have asthma and have, you know, grown up with this every day of their life. So, I mean, you see that, and you just keep going, and um, and it was worth it, and I felt really good that I did it. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's more about the experience and, complete, and competing in the experience and spreading that stuff away, you know, and we... Uh, the, the fight for it, the American Lung Association, they're, they help with smoking cessation, Carissa, they help with uh, <laughs> asthma, anything lung related, COPD, and uh, lung cancer, asthma, bronchitis, allergies, and right. we're, in, we're in Texas, in Austin, we're cedars everywhere, so obviously that, that's an important thing, and this fundraiser helps fund their research and their education for people who have lung problems. We have another teammate here tonight. Her name is Val. Val, come on up, man. Tell us about doing uh, the Fight Fair Climb last year. And this is your second time. This is your second, second time. time. Yeah. It was last year. I felt a lot more prepared. I'd be very diligent. I'm lucky that there's a, a parking garage by me that has seven flights. So I would just go up just about every weekend and then during the week try to do cardio. And this year, I'm not as diligent, but my, my tactic for this year is endurance. So I, this morning, I did 49, oh. and I'm here. Yes. <laughs> you did 49 flights this morning? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, good for you! <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> That was. <laughs> <laughs> we were all going to get stabbed after this. <laughs> so hard. Please, please, got it. Please, please take a picture of me because I will be in witness protection. Or I'll be dead after this and missing. Watch this. So, there we go. Uh, we got one. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> so this year my, my tactic is endurance because it is 30, 31 flights. And it's very different when you do it, like what I do is I go up the seven flights, take the elevator down, and then start back up. So I Wait, what? do seven minutes, a minute break, or seven flights, a minute break, seven, so I get a break when you're in that tower, and those, you know, those flights are super, super long, it's like, oh my god, it's very... Are the stairs up only? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you go yeah, upstairs yeah. only and you take the elevator yeah, down because... Your knees would just die. Right. Yeah. Not mad at you. <coughs> the bigger impact on your knees is actually going down the stairs because your waist is slamming down. So, yeah, 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 it's pretty tough. We have another team member here. Her name is Lisa Jimenez, Gabe's wife. Come Lisa, up. come get on the mic and the camera. <laughs> now, this is Lisa and Gabe's first year participating in this. I just want to know what yeah. your thoughts are. Like, are you nervous? Yeah. Of course he right is. <laughs> Supporting a player. Hang on a sec. So you're scared? Yeah. Why? Is it just because it's so tall? Oh, you're claustrophobic? Oh, yeah. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, give this, give this woman a round of applause. Something very, very tall. She's scared of tight spaces, and stairwells aren't Mr. Tramps, so which is where we're broadcasting live. I was just gonna say something, I'm glad I didn't, but you'll be fine. Yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> and her husband, Stupid Tree, is here, Gabe. Gabe, come up to the mic. You're training this year, this is your first bike fire climb, also, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. Now, are you nervous about it? Okay. I think that's a boy. Boys aren't scared of anything. That's not true. Yeah. But, uh, I'm scared Nudis is going to end up on a Super Bowl. Yeah, he is. How about boys? So, it's going to be a two-year fun time, right? You trained a little bit yesterday, right? I've been training for the past few weeks. How long is how well has that been going? Well, once I got over the gout, um, I, I've been good. I've been good. Uh, I don't have gout. <laughs> My test came back negative. I got a fucked up foot, but I don't have gout. 
It ain't sprained. It ain't. I don't have gout. I just have bad genes. <laughs> you're welcome, noodles. So you think you're gonna survive? Oh yeah. I've been doing 30 to 40 flights a weekend. Good. Jesus, uh, I need to get cracking, man. Yeah. He's going to smoke all of us. This is not going to end well for Dave. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, drink up. I'm usually, it takes me like all day to do the 40 flights, but you know, whatever. Well, I make up, when I make up in lack of training, I make up, make up in sheer meanness. So I go to mean mode. I say, I'm going to soldier on and screw it. I'm going to make it happen. And that's, that's where I pick up the slack for my lack of training, which I haven't done yet. I did, wait, I did 10 squats the other day. Is that, that count? 10. 10 whole squats. So you're right. Like body weight? <laughs> no, my own body weight. Yeah. Squat on these nuts? Oh, got it! Hey, we have Todd Dixon here. Yeah, Todd Dixon. 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 He's on the board for the American Lung Association and for the Fight for Air Climb. All right. Todd, come up to the mic a little bit and let's talk a little bit. I'm glad you made it. Man. Hey, yeah. Sorry, we're running a little bit late. No, I brought Chris with me, too. He's also the uh, the co-chair on the event. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. So, Todd, what company are you working with, Alan? Uh, well, I was at Alan. Chris is actually still at Alan. I'm actually over in the oil business now. Oh, really? Uh, sweet. South Surf Petroleum. And how many years have you been participating with the Fight for Air Climb? Uh, this will be my fourth year, fourth, fourth year? ongoing year. Yeah. Okay, okay. Any training advice for our team members who are scared and nervous? Well, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> us. They're starting to train. train. <laughs> <laughs> Start to train. Yeah, we, we go to Mount Vanel every Saturday, oh. and that's like one going up in a hundred steps, but the Frost Tower is six hundred steps. Right. So you've actually got to go up and down and up and down. And, down. <laughs> and the training actually is twelve times, so we double the enhancement. Oh, I got you. Um, but it's cool, and, and I would highly recommend it because when you're at the Frost Tower, running up the tower, you're you're inside the building, right. so there's not a lot of breathing room, right. um, and it's not like a cattle call where everybody's going up all at yeah, once. But um, yeah, it's definitely great, you want to yeah. you want to get your legs, your thighs, and your and your lungs really is what you want. Right. So you would say like uh, doing squats, lunges, calf raises, and stuff on the side of doing the stair climb would oh, help sure, out. Yeah. Maybe some core workout like. Planks or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the guy was actually re recommending planks the other day. And he said that's probably the absolute best thing you can do the fitness trainers. I can rock a 90 second plank. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I was thinking that was that low. <laughs> I can rock a 90 second plank. So Chris, how long have you been? Uh, how long have you been? Oh, thanks, Todd. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, thanks no for coming out, man. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, yeah, give me a round of applause. Man. Also, listeners, uh, audience members, we, we're doing a silent auction in the back, so uh, feel free to, you know, buy my comics. <laughs> get, get Lisa's uh, gift package. It's really, it's a lot of, man, that's a wicked gift package, by the way. $125 worth of uh, gift certificate to her salon. Shoot. That's four haircuts, guys. <laughs> All right. Chris, you're the trainer. No, I'm not. I'm actually part of the American Lung Association board as well. Okay, yeah. Come up to the mic and let's talk a little bit. Yeah. yeah. How, how long have you been with the American Lung Association? Uh, this will be my second full year. Second full year? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, almost, yeah. <laughs> we, do a comp we do a comedian style here. So. I like it. I like it. <laughs> get, get all up on the mic. So you've been here with the American Lung Association two years? Yeah. What, second. what do you do with them? Uh, so, just as Todd does, uh, we do the coordination for the event. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the leadership board as well, so a lot of the, hey, let's go out, kind of like we're doing today, uh, talk about what we do, uh, kind of what we, the, the funds we raise go to for research and advocacy programs and everything that we do. Uh, one of the major uh, messages we're getting out this month, uh, especially with it being Lung Force Month, is one of the, a lot of people don't know this, is one of the leading cancer killing women is lung cancer. Right. So, that's another part of the message that we're trying to get out there. Uh, so that way everyone knows that, not only that, uh, a lot of the funds we raise as well, I think it's, uh, last time we checked, it's like 81 cents for every dollar goes to those type of things. Oh, okay. good. So we give a lot of that money back, as much as we can, really. Uh, so that's why, especially for the event this year, we want to go bigger and better every single year. The bigger we get, the more we get to give back, and the more people get involved, is even better. Yeah. So it's always good. Yeah, we've ramped up our fundraising. We're trying to get first place, but we keep getting out fundraised. You're at number one. I saw that this morning that uh, you guys are 20 bucks ahead of Curly Cole. Yes! Curly Cole, that's it, Dave. 
That son of a gun. I'm going to get you this year. Does, does everybody here know who Curly Culp is? Oh, yeah. He, he's a... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So he's like the most uh, recently inducted Hall of Famer for the NFL. Yes, yes. Right, right, right. He played for the Oilers back in the good old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has asthma, right? He does, yeah. yeah you play, yeah, you play professional football with asthma. Is that growing up? Yeah. So that's how tough some of these guys are. And you'll see when you go out to the event team members, they uh, you'll have first responders like firefighters, full gear, yep. doing multiple runs. They'll do like two, three runs in it. And you'll have these competitive dudes, all spandexed out with their Nike Air, Air Max running shoes or whatever they're wearing, or their toe shoes, going up in like two and a half minutes or something. That, yeah. I, I think they have grappling hooks in their spandex. That's what I think. <laughs> they have some Batman gear. They just zip up to the top. <laughs> Speaking of which, I may need some of that. I don't know. Right. I'm nursing a bad foot right now. I'm telling you. So he needs to start training. I need to start training. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling good today. I'm going to go out and <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for yeah. coming out. So. And thank you for putting on this event every year. Yeah. And uh, we're going to continue to support y'all. This yeah. is fun. Yeah. I, was, I was saying earlier, I don't know why I'm attached <laughs> to this event the way I am. It's just fun for me. Right. I, I think right. we get some mixture of the physical challenge, the education, the American <laughs> Association provides to people. It's just cool. And it's just yeah. a unique yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not your typical 5K. Yeah, yeah, it's you're not, not Well, it's, it's a vertical one, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it's, 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 it's definitely a tough uh, tough thing to do. Um, and uh, I'm I'm going to start training. <laughs> <laughs> we all say that, but I've changed about five weeks in a year. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, it's five days because it's only on Sunday. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all I need. Well, guys, thanks for coming out. Um, Make yourself at home. They got a lovely bar here at Mr. Tramps, and they got a full menu. So yeah, and we're all, oh wow, we just rounded the half hour mark. Okay, let's see what else I can pull out of my ears. Right. Thank you guys very much. Chris, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Okay, so that's the end of the podcast. That's all I have. I'm no story. You got to come up to the mic if you want to talk. You know the rules. <laughs> Point of order, Brian Barrera just dropped half a C note. Um the silent auction, so oh, here was my comments! Yeah, death the Wolverine Canadian variants. You know how rare those are? Hey? I don't know. No? I don't know how many Hey, uh, so yeah, so I'm on, I, I don't, I generously donated what? my Battle of the Atom, all 10 issues of that X-Men crossover that happened two years ago, Death of Wolverine Canadian variants, issues one through four that happened this last November, they killed them, but don't worry, he'll come back, Secret Wars. Wait, that's not how you sell comics. <laughs> and, and once again, Lisa Amen is a cuss by Lisa, uh, she donated $125 worth of gift certificates, Looks like uh, some shampoo, conditioner, and a brush. Am I right, Lisa? Uh, no, it's like a lotion. Lotion? It's some gear, some chick gear. Okay, so while if you're a couple guy, bid on the comics. Ladies, bid on that, and I'll be like. Uh, ladies can bid on the comics too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All your bids are from ladies. Got a little feminist in here. Didn't you? Sorry. <laughs> okay, you're done. We, got, <laughs> we are a part of a larger podcast community. Yes. It kind of, kind of like life on Earth. It kind of just sprung forth. Okay. And I kind of blame. God. I kind of, I kind of blame uh, Brian and his old podcast that he was on. Right, right. Uh, the yes. Big Cast, mm -hmm. Charlie Hodge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it just kind of organically developed and grew, and we have some great podcasts, and I listen to quite a few. I, have a, I actually have a listening schedule, mm -hmm. like, throughout the week. One of those podcasts is uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Comedy. These four guys are tasked with doing stand-up comedy in Central Texas. Parker Heights, Copper's Cove, and Colleen, the most depressing black hole of humor in the state. And these four guys are trying their damnedest to go out there and make people laugh and brighten their days. And that's Adam Wolf, Jay Ortiz, Josh Oldham, 
and that's it. And they have a guest every now and again, like Bob Six. We all know him from local open mics at um, uh, the coffee place on airport. Kick butt, butt coffee. Kick butt coffee. Kick butt coffee. Yeah, kick butt coffee. See, that's why I love our homies. Because they got our back. That's the definition of a homie. They got your back. When I my brain farts and breaks down and there's a short oh, circuit between my ears, yeah. uh -huh. they got my back. Like Val for fat checks, you know. So if you guys ever get a chance, download Cloudy with a Chance of Comedy and somehow we gotta figure out a way to support their comedy scene. Because it's a, it's an uphill battle for them. They have to train the audience to be a good audience, and that's tough for them. So let's give them some love and support, and uh, go out there. And if they're at, if you ever hear these guys and they're at an open mic, go out and support them at our local open mics. And the next time they have a showcase, we'll try to make it out there way more. You know these Southies like Mike Clark and Linda and Linda mm -hmm. and Linda mm -hmm. and Linda. They're always like, oh, you're too far north. Mike Clark's a we are not in Dallas. We're not, and it's a Sunday, so traffic isn't that bad. Instead of an hour and a half, it's only 45 minutes. I'm just kidding. But no, we need to go up there and support some right. some, some syntax mm -hmm. comedy. Uh, also, like, once again, Adam Wolf is performing tonight in the Funniest Person in Austin contest because he has a summer home here in Austin. That's how, <laughs> that's how he did that. And uh, But we also have some great uh, podcasters here, uh, Val, aka mm -hmm. Natalie. And Lala over there, they do uh, the radio tatas, <laughs> and uh, they got they got some great benchmark segments like uh, trucker porn. What the fuck is he saying? Starring yours truly. You're welcome. By the way, you should thank them right now because that keeps me from going unhinged. So. Thank you. Thank you. They say you're welcome. All right. Uh, Lala and Brennan over here and his beard have a podcast called Non Committal. And uh, they're in their third episode. Okay. And so there's a ton of content and stuff. And Laura Paxson over there, she has an online radio show cool. called Old Duce's Ghost. Hey, you know about me? So she, it's a music-themed radio show, and it runs, what, two hours? Yeah. It's a two-hour show. And she themes it like uh, she just recently wrapped up doing a, a two-parter movie music uh, show. And that's always fun to listen to, too. She's on Chaos... What? I can't hear you. Step up to the mic. What's up? <laughs> I believe it's Chaos. Oh, but is it Chaos with a K or C? I'm not sure. Maybe when she gets up here while I'm right time, she can come. There we go. Hey, what's up? So tell us about your radio show. Well, it's mostly just like playlists, but I try to think of the theme. So yeah, it's uh, Chaos Austin, Chaos Radio Austin. Uh, okay, cool. It was Chaos, Chaos with a K. Chaos with a K. I didn't know. Like, I, I really enjoyed your Christmas show. Oh, yeah. Because you had just a mix match <laughs> of, of yeah, different, stuff. yeah, Christmas. 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 Christmas songs. Oh, almost like your uh, podcast. Yeah, but hers was way more professional oh, sounding. Oh, okay. And it, it was twice as long, so it was twice as good. <laughs> twice as good. It was super cool. <laughs> Now, I listened to that on the way home because during Christmas I was zigzagging between here and my dad's house. Yeah, it was a, that was a hot mess. So yeah, okay. And are you? Is your show? Is it downloadable? Is yes. it? Or where can the listeners download it? What is it scheduled like on a certain day of the week? Yeah, you can just go to the website and click on the schedule. And I'm on Mondays from seven to nine. Seven to nine on Monday? Okay. And if you can't listen live, we can always download it. Yeah, you can download it or stream it. Uh, okay. And we can do that through Chaos Radio? Yeah. Okay. And there's a bunch of other really good shows on there too. Like, like, name a couple. Uh. uh oh, uh, put her on the spot. People, yeah, well, sorry, I'm a little, we'll edit that in post. But, uh, Night People is really good. That's all made at night, though. Okay. But, uh, uh, okay, night people. I so. feel like I'm being interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> we have ways of making you talk. Wow. <laughs> I guess that's German. I don't know. But yeah, so, How long have you been doing your show? I started in November. Okay. Yeah. So it's still pretty new for you. Yeah, yeah. Any, any advice on making ours a better show? <laughs> no. I even wrote out notes and we're gasping. It's like... I know how you can make it better. Have you on it? Farts! Ah! <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> 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 
Just kidding. <laughs> I'm not that too good at podcasts. There may or may not be one more aspect of this. Well, if you guys, you know what? Let's do this thing because we're, we're getting real close to that time. So if you guys have any Ask Ruka questions, if you need life advice, get your butts up to the mic and let's Ask Ruka. <laughs> Coming to you now. Because, like I said, we talked about um, a grown man wanting to buy a gun living right. in his mother's house. Right. You advise the seven, uh, seventh grader how to hit on chicks. No? That's my paraphrase. Okay. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's, yeah. And uh, you give advice to a... Uh, um, butt stuff. Yeah, butt stuff. Butt stuff. Okay, he needs help. He needs to call, he needs to call a therapist. You don't want butt stuff. No. Okay, cool. Okay, let's move on. All right, um... We have a... There it is. Actually, have a what's the follow-up? <laughs> okay. okay, what's your name? You mispronounced follower. <laughs> <laughs> it's called fan. Well, my follow-up is the guy, he needs to stop trying to go right for it. He needs to start with his tongue and move his head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you. That's a good answer. On the next week's Ask Jesse segment... <laughs> The new segment, Start with the butt stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so that's not something you just jump right into? So to speak. No, what? Well, it sounds like it's exactly how you do it. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, last week, last week's episode was pretty, uh, it was pretty heavy. I had a lot of angst, a lot of rage built up, and I had to filter that a certain way. And thanks to, uh, Gabe's question, it kind of was a launching point, but we do have a little, just a little bit of feedback from uh, from that episode, and uh, babe, I need you to talk while I pull this crap up, because of course I'm not ready. You so know? I hope you guys had a good weekend, yes, yeah, beautiful weather. Don't stay my own! Anybody, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I guess you guys all watched the fights. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah. Why did I spend $100 on that? Here, Gabe, yeah. come up to the mic and let's talk about your uh, bad investment. <laughs> what, uh, it, it seems like it was, they, they were building it the fight of the century, but it seems like it was the bore of the century. It was the bore of the century. They, like this podcast, apparently. But uh, I fell asleep. In, in no, it's okay. Six, we were calling for the fell asleep in around 16. I wanted to put in a uh, part of 11. On your podcast that's that that's as bad as her fall asleep during the Avengers on Friday night. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Yeah. I, I just, I nodded short, just for right? a second. Uh, yeah, nodded for a couple of seconds. What? We almost got kicked out of the Japanese house because you were snoring. Stop making Line. You snore? <laughs> I just got tired. I don't know what happened. You're in the movie? Why don't you know what you're doing? Are you tired? Yeah. Well, no. It's, well, it was late. We went to an eight-hour show. It's a two-hour movie. It's no, an eight-hour show? Yeah. It's like two it was hours. good, though. You should watch it. I just took a bite of your son. Totally mm-hmm. No, it came out like three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a good movie. You should take the girls. I think they're like, I would, but they don't like. They're a pretty good show. They don't like. Uh, no, I don't like them. You don't like the Avengers? No, my daughters. Why would I take them someplace I want to be? So, what made the fight so boring, though? All right. When it boils down to it. Oh, when you go to see a super fight, I'm talking about the fight. Right. Yeah, I'm talking about, I mean, we're talking about Tyson Lennox Lewis. We're talking about Ali Frazier or Ali, name anybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you see two stars, fighters, I'm putting air quotes around fighters. When you see two fighters, you want to see a fight. Okay. See a fight. They didn't fight. They were dancing around? No, I mean... Were they hugging a lot? I was Pacquiao trying to trying make a... Fight. Y'all hear that? Yeah. That's the sound in the back of my head. Always. <laughs> Forever. It's like, she's... I hear that voice. Here. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So it was boring. Mayweather didn't fight. Mayweather came out. Were you drunk by that point? Did, yes. I saw him. He was in the ring. Right you by. stopped by my house. Do you remember? Were you drunk or were Do you, you remember? Not that. <laughs> not that bad? No. Okay, okay. No, not that. <laughs> so, but at the end, you wanted to see a fight in your life. Okay. And you spent $100 to watch two grown guys have a dance. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think MMA might have spoiled you a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like boxing. You want to see a knockout. Yeah. Every time you want to see a knockout or a tap. Right. I right. quit. I can't take it anymore. You don't get that with boxing. With boxing, you get, we're going to do this for an hour, and at the end, we're going to let three other people decide who actually won. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, what would you have rather spent your hundred dollars on? Blogs. <laughs> <laughs> Down in Texas Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> what about game? I need you over here. Oh. All right, what's up, Brennan? Did y'all hear the, the latest deal is that Pacquiao fought with a torn rotator cuff yeah. and was denied uh, an anti-inflammatory shot before the fight? Yeah. Like no, is that, not is that for real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just came out today. I read, it on, uh, I read it on uh, is that the Underground, which is an MMA forum. Yeah. And they're talking about it as well. Yeah, I mean, recently, like... like so he went, well, it like went to full 12 rounds, right? Yeah, with full 12. And, and how, what was the decision? Like, how many points or whatever? Um, what was the difference? It was something like <laughs> 7 to 5 round wise. Like, 7 to 5 uh, Mayweather for Pacquiao. However, you want to spread that out. So, he that took him 12 the rounds with a torn rotator cuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he, he didn't really advance on him. There was a couple rounds where he really kind of made some moves. But Max Kellerman made a really good point. He was interviewing Pacquiao after the fight. And he said, So. What did he do that kept you from attacking like you normally do? And Pacquiao goes, oh, I thought I was winning the fight, so I didn't need to attack. And they're like, and he goes, whoa, wait, wait, wait. The judges didn't see you winning the fight. At ringside, we didn't see you winning the fight. But you thought you were winning the fight? How about this? He can't, you normally throw this many punches, you only do this many. So how did that work out? What did he do to the thing? Anyway, he got into it. And the big point I saw was that Pacquiao had no reason. All he wanted to say was, no, I thought I was winning. But he couldn't say why I thought I was winning. What did they get with him? What do you mean? Did they get with him? Yeah. Have the people talk to him about a rotator cuff? No, these nuts. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> God, I don't get it. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so the, the fight was just. <laughs> Let's get on some listener feedback, huh? Okay. Super Meowie, that one right there with the glasses. <laughs> Fat Check 1, Admiral Kadave, obviously. Episode 132 was so heavy, I couldn't fat check your heartfelt sentiments. I consider this is one of your best episodes. Aww. Hmm. Thank you. I wish the download stopped so too. <laughs> uh, WCW Worldwide, which is our buddy Brian over there, because he loves Sting. Uh, and uh, Harley yeah. Race and Ric Flair. Oh, I thought Brian was back there. No. no. Wow. He, he, uh, he tweeted. just donated? Yeah. Harley Race just donated. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> was the subtext there that all Hispanic people look alike? Is that what you're <laughs> I can't see. It's sad because Chris is back there. <laughs> I'm like, where is Brian? Uh, okay. Thank God this is all this crazy. He, he posted a picture of someone in Baltimore, I'm assuming, and it was a checklist. Did they look like Brian, too? No. Uh, this is a female. Uh, and it says, when is when it's okay to write in America? When your sports team wins a championship, check. When your sports team loses, check. When Joe Paterno, when Joe Paterno was fired, check. Pumpkins, check. When an unarmed black person is killed by the police, unchecked. That kind of summed up last week's episode. So, that and apathy. And then Adam Wolf said, uh, hey, thanks for the shout out. So, okay, cool. So, you're welcome, and you're welcome for this one too, Adam. So, that's about it for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please, um, 
We're going to leave that up for a little bit longer, the, uh, the auction bid, if you wish. Uh, if you're listening um, online or through uh, Periscope or through the live feed, uh, you can donate to the Fight for Air Climb and you can donate to our team by going to uh, Fight for Air Climb Austin. Search Laura, that. Laura posted the link. If you're on Periscope, we're going to save this so you can replay it. You'll be able to go through the chat log and see it. Yeah, like Brandon just, just, just said off mic. So uh, there's a chat log and then there's a link and stuff. So what you can do is you can go to our Twitter feed. There's a hyperlink. You can donate to our team or any individual that's on the team. You're more than welcome to do that. And if you're searching through Google, go through uh, uh, Fight for Air Climb Austin and then click on the donate button. And when you click the donate button, select uh, just find the team and type in Ruka with only one. And then uh, you can donate to our team that way. And thank you all for listening very much. Uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting the American Lung Association and the Fight for Air Climb 2015. And uh, also, uh, one other thing. We have a sponsor. Where's she at? Come up here, Shane. Our friend Shane is our first, honest to God, real life human being sponsor. No, <laughs> Mork's, Sporks by Mork is not a real sponsor. So Shane is though. So Shane, tell us about your business real quick. And uh, tell the listeners, our homies, what's up with your business. <laughs> okay, so my business is Be Ostentatious. And what we are is a, an iMarketing group. So we do PR, we do event planning, we do web development, we do social media networking, uh, and business networking. And we're at BeOstentatious.com. Cool. There it is. And uh, if, you need, uh, if you have a business or you know someone who's doing some uh, internet marketing or some uh, anything like that, please get them in touch with Shani. Uh, her business is growing rapidly. So uh, that says good things about her and what she's got going on. So give it up one more time for Be Ostentatious. All right. So it's that time. Ruka, how can they find you on Twitter? At Famous Ruka. Okay. She's correct. How can they find <laughs> us? How can they find us on Twitter? At Ruka underscore Dave. Right. And Facebook? Ruka Dave. There you go. Okay. And if you want to find us online, we're at RukaDave.com. We're on Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, tell your friends. Leave a, a review, a rating, or what have you. And uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at L. David Thomas. I write for the Austin Knot, but I have two articles left and then I'm done uh, writing for them and I'll be branching, I'll be expanding my Comedy Wham website. So check out my writing at austin.com and at comedywham.com. Thanks. Say goodnight, Ruka. Good night. Thanks, Mr. Tramp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tramp. Thank you, Mr. Tramp. Thank, thank you, Alfredo. Thank you for the live for being so accommodating to us. Come to Mr. Tramps. They got a full menu. They got an amazing bar and a ton of beer. So and they got Jameson and Ginger Ale. So that's Thumbs up, Dudley and Bob Warriors. Get your butts over here. Smooches. <laughs>